it is quite hard to notice, but if you look closely, every single cylindrical grain of smokeless powder has a tiny hole through it, about as large as a human hair, and it is there for a very specific reason. Stay with me and not only you will understand why, but also what this has to do with candies. Let's get started. Welcome back to Becky Ballistics. Since powder grains are very small, I am going to upscale the problem a bit for clarity. Let's say that I have this propellant block, still in its soft consistency, and that I want to use it for loading this cartridge. So let's assume that this is the amount of propellant I need for my particular load. What shape should I make it into? The first thing that I can think of is simply making the propellant into one single piece that fits in the case. If I did this, however, upon firing it would barely have the force of getting the bullet out of the barrel, most of the propellant would actually remain unburnt. The reason is that the burning, or deflagration of the propellant, happens on the surface of it, so the material is consumed from the surface in. You can see the same happening for smoldering charcoal and dissolving candies. The surface is offset towards the bulk of the material. For a given composition and pressure, the flame front velocity is fixed, and with the typical values encountered, it wouldn't be fast enough to generate the gas necessary to keep the pressure high. To solve that, we need to increase the surface area of our propellant, and the best way to do it is to split it into many round or cylindrical pieces, which are going to be the many different grains of our powder. My goal now is to select a grain size that exposes an amount of surface large enough that the gas generation rate will allow reaching the operating pressure of the weapon. But even though at this point I would have reached the desired maximum pressure, I would still be getting a, a high amount of unburnt powder and reduced performance. This is due to the fact that it is not only the initial propellant surface that matters, but also how it changes while the grain is burning. Our spherical grains, of which I have an enlarged model here, will shrink during burning, while the outer layers get burnt, and so the gas generating surface will tend to decrease over time. This behavior is called regressive burning. On the other hand, while the propellant is burning, the bullet is moving, increasing the chamber volume and thus additionally decreasing the pressure. This gives an early decrease in pressure after the maximum is reached, which is something we really want to avoid. This problem, however, would be solved if I made the grains in a shape that instead increases or at least keeps a relatively constant the exposed surface. In the first case, we call the grain shape progressive, while in the second we call it neutral. For now, let's aim for the simplest result, which is getting the surface not to decrease as the burning proceeds. I could do this by using a disc shape, like this one I'm holding, which has the same initial surface as the sphere, but will decrease much more slowly, since the main surfaces are not going to change a lot before the grain is completely consumed. This behavior is good enough for portable weapons, meaning that we can get little unburned propellant and good efficiency. So problem solved, just make the propellant into flakes or discs and we're done, right? Well, no, not really. The flake shape is not very well suited as the grains get impractically large, they tend to be bulky and are hard to measure by volume reliably. So it doesn't surprise that flake powders are commonly used for less intensive applications like shotgun and pistol loads, while they are very uncommon in rifle cartridges. There is an important historical exception to this though, guess it in the comments. Anyway, what do we find in rifle cartridges? Well, most of the times they are loaded with cylinder powder. But hang on a moment, a simple cylinder would have a very regressive burning similar to that of a sphere, so it wouldn't make a lot of sense. But it doesn't have to, since these are not simple cylinders, but perforated cylinders, and that's why they are sometimes called tubular propellants. The tiny hole in the middle of the grain is what gives the propellant its neutral burning. While the outside of the grain burns towards the middle, the surface of the hole burns towards the outside, until they meet. This makes for a very good burning behavior without the problems associated with flake powders, and that's the reason why they are so common in rifle cartridges. Sometimes in shooting ranges you can even find some unburnt powder that clearly shows the enlargement of the hole. Historically speaking, tubular propellants have been extremely common since 1900, and in the first half of the century some strange shapes appeared, most notably the English cordite, which as the name suggests was composed of very long perforated cylinders, and the Italian solenite, which was similar to the typical tubular propellants but with a much larger hole in the middle. From the 1950s though, a lot of rifle cartridges started being loaded with these so-called ball powders that are composed of spherical granules with no perforation whatsoever. 
That's because in those the material is not homogeneous and in particular the outer surface is treated with a deterrent that strongly reduces the burn rate. So as the surface of the grain decreases, the faster burning material is exposed and in the end a close to neutral or even slightly progressive burning behavior is obtained. The analogy with candies continues. Very often candies that are round in shape tend to have a soft or syrupy core, so that even though at that point the exposed surface is little, the soft material dissolves quickly and the flavor intensity is maintained. The last thing that I want to show you is a truly progressive burning grain shape. This is some 30mm propellant. It is a perforated cylinder shape, but instead of having one single hole through the grain, it has 19, so that the new surface generates faster than the outside surface decreases. So, now you know what those tiny holes are for. If you have any doubts or questions, write them in the comments below and let me know if you liked the video or not by clicking the thumbs up or down. Subscribe if you don't want to miss the next ones and I'll see you next time. Bye!